Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Hey you guys, it's Shelley. Welcome to this week's 320 podcast. I am uh, late. I pretty much skipped a week, but I have some good reasons for that. And uh, some of that you're going to hear about today. Um, I, I really had to have some extra days to process some things, I think, in God's kindness. Um, I, I'm coming to you with this message today because, uh, you know, the, the legacy of one, because I am the product of um, a woman who was faithful. Um, now granted, I've had different mentors in different seasons. Early in my walk with Christ, God uh, gave me a precious prayer group uh, with several women who played instrumental uh, roles in my life, um, especially in the early days um, and for many, many years. And then there came, you know, the season that, that unexpectedly shifted, and, and with that were relationships and even the roles of relationships you know and um uh, i remember being in the the worst part of that winter season and receiving a voicemail and i wish so much you know i kept her voicemail to me for years i probably only deleted it maybe the last four or three years maybe and i wish i had not have done that now it would be worth a lot to me to hear her voice um, anyways, her, her, I get a voicemail from this, a stranger and it just says, you know, hello, Shelly, this is Pat Self and God has moved me and I'm paraphrasing cause I don't really call exactly what it said, but I'm, uh, I moved at God, God's direction from Virginia to Texas and I'm answering the ad that you had in the paper to come to meetings for the broken hearted women with broken hearts. And that was my introduction to Pat Self. Um, what's interesting is we, we laughed about it, told the story many, many times as a witness before God, for God, um, and even to the Lord, just blessing him so much for his supernatural ways, because I actually never put an ad in the paper. Never. When she called and left me that message, I remember calling her back and saying, you know, I never put an ad in the paper. She said, really? I said, no, never. I guess God put that ad in the paper, and kind of the rest is history. Um, What I can tell you now is God sent exactly who I needed in that season to get me where I am today Um, in so many ways. And, you know, as as you kind of listen to some of the things I want to share with you, I want you to understand, oh, I want you to understand that your life can do the same thing that hers did with Jesus. Because I I am doing today so much of the work she helped me learn. And um and and I so I'm I'm not I don't want you to just focus entirely on like this is my life with, with Jesus and Pat, although I, y'all know I tend, this is kind of my, uh, what's, what does Jan call it in our groups, guys? This is my style, right? (laughs) This is my style. Jan has a certain style in our healing group. I have a certain style. By now, many of you understand the different styles. We see the beauty of God's kingdom at work with the body of believers. Everybody's a different member of the body. We all operate different. None, none is in, more important or less important than the other. All are, are necessary and all are required. All are significant. And this little lady, little lady, okay, comes into my life. I start hearing her story. She was widowed, I believe, at the age of 30. Her husband was a prophet to the prophets. And he led her to the Lord during the Jesus movement. And she used to tell me stories about that season and that time and how he would set his 
his family, her, after marriage, and uh, the the baby girl, Heather, down at the dinner table, and he would teach. You know, he would do what he was born to do. And anyways, he was called home to the Lord, and that, that precious wife and daughter were left um, without him for a very long time. And, uh, you know, I think about that a lot because I'm like, she had to learn very early who the husbandman was who and and what was the nature what was his nature what was his um heart for her and her little family what was his who who was the bridegroom right he became her all in all matter of fact her ministry was called his bride international and it, it she always drove a car uh, around with a magnet on it that had that name and it was always important for her to bear witness whether sh- whatever street she was driving down wherever building she was parked that that would catch somebody's attention and um i i, I uh you know i <laughs> i'm like you know lord I, I feel like an era has ended if that makes sense. And it's not just for her. It's it's for me and many others. It's I almost feel like this, okay, God saying, now I need you to be sure you continue. You know, it's like when Elijah goes home and the mantle is tossed on Elijah. And um, I have never seen a woman ever in all of my life that was like her. I've never seen anybody multiply the kingdom and bind up broken hearts like she did as quickly as she did. One of the, just to tell you a little bit about her before I start sharing with you what the things that were really pivotal in my walk that I feel like God sent her to me for is uh, I would be in rooms with her at events or whatever, and that woman could she would make her round she knew how to she would always say things like buy you got to buy up the time sometimes you buy yourself into a room you might have to buy a ticket you might have to pay a fee but it was a sacrifice she was willing to make to get to the hearts that were currently present in that room and she would make her way around that room and how can I pray for you and God would just direct her to this person, to that person, to this person, to that person. And this, honestly, guys, is the way she lived every day. Um, she would get up in the mornings, understand that when she was, uh, when her husband was called home to the Lord, she, she, um, <laughs> God directed her every day, her calendar. He would tell her where to go eat, who to go, who to go see. Maybe she she met a new waitress. She would the Lord would send her back to that restaurant, you know, whenever next week or whatever. And she would she would continue pouring into that person until the Lord Lord finished that assignment and what it was he was doing. She was sent to many many broken hearts, and I was one of those for sure. So I remember um, early on, I was so impressed with how she did things. I was like, my goodness, she is multiplying the kingdom so fast. I want to be like her, you know, so I'm going to do what she does. And I, I remember going back to her after about four days and saying, listen, I, I ignored my own preaching, which means we're all unique and made to, be, to do things a certain way. I said, I just tried to do what you do, and I'm exhausted. And this this woman was still like this in her 70s, um, early 80s. You know what I'm saying? She was still running circles around me. I was like, can we sit down? You know? Um, it was am- amazing to watch. I, I'll tell you two of... Um, there was a time I was in Jennings, Louisiana, and I was visiting my friends at HLE Radio, and I had traveled alone, and I was in a hard season, struggling with my health, and um, I was, I woke up in the middle, early, early mornings, I want to say 4, 4.30 in the morning, about to pass out, and it completely freaked me out. I could tell, so anxiety really hit me because I was on my own in a hotel room. You know, I didn't, and there was no one with me. And I, I 
I didn't even think about what time it was and picked up and called her, and she immediately answered, what's going on? Because she knew I would never call that hour. But this was this was a woman who, you know, she didn't sleep a lot. Um, and and God used every ounce of time she had, every every moment. I don't know how many phone calls a day she made. I don't know how many she answered. Um, but I'm telling you, the woman has a legacy of so many sons and daughters. It's incredible. It's incredible. And in a lot of ways, I want to be like her when I grow up. You know, God, there is no telling from Virginia to Texas. Uh, the amount of hearts that she touched, that she led to Jesus, that she led through valleys with him, that she encouraged when they wanted to quit. And, and that's when she really came to me. I was I was trying to step back out into ministry, trying to rise above a storm in my life, and I was struggling in it. I was in just such a dark place. And And I can tell you that the first thing I learned from her was how to listen. If, if, and, and all, all my girls who are listening today that are in the rooms, you know that that, uh, because many of you have told me, listen, Shelly, I've learned how to listen by being in your rooms. Well, listen, you're learning how to listen because I had to learn how to listen. And because at the time I didn't have anyone who, who would listen. I mean, I had a couple, but it just, I don't know. I, I, there's some things I just couldn't tell everybody, you know, in that season. But her, I could tell everything to um, her and my uh, my BFF and, of course, my mom. But there was just something about her God knew I needed. Something about her God knew I needed. And, and a lot of that was uh, she brought the prophetic. She pulled the prophetic out of me when I was still in a, in a, in a world that didn't teach that, preach that, um, even acknowledge that, and certainly didn't, didn't help me develop that with the Lord. So, um, this little lady just wrecked all of hell. I can promise you she was on the hit list from, uh, the enemy. He, she probably made him quite mad, but, um, he made her quite mad. I learned how to be a fighter with her. Um, you know, I learned how to keep getting back up because she was never going to let me die in the valley, you know, and, um, she was with me for every, I don't know, every early morning phone call, every late night, hours on end, listening to things I had to say. Um, she would say things like, Shelly, tell me, tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. And at first, I never understood what that, what do you mean, what, it, what do I see? I didn't understand. She was seeing that I was seeing the truth about some things, that I, and I didn't want to see it. And she was recognizing the gift in me and trying to pull it out of me and saying, actually, you're seeing what's true. That's why you're, you're, you're confused. You're seeing things for what they are. And one of the things on my notes, guys, that I wrote is she taught me how to call it what it is. You know, so many of you guys, as me as well, we're, we're, we, we have learned, and some of us are just learning, that it's okay to say how I feel, good, bad, and ugly. It's okay to call things what they are. I don't, I, I need, you know, I'm, I've learned and you guys are learning that we don't sweep sin under the rug. I don't care who they are, what title they carry. I'm not going to bow to sin. I'm going to, I'm called to call sin out, call people gently into repentance. Um, got, there may be a timing to some things, right? But when people are harming me, I have a right to speak up. When people, when people are betraying me, I have a right to speak up. When, when people are misunderstanding me, I have a right to use my voice. If I'm being abused, misused, um, uh, or used, right? I have a right to put a boundary down and say, that's not going to happen anymore. It doesn't make me less of a Christian. It makes me actually a wiser Christian. And, and you guys have all been learning that in the boundaries class and in the healing with me and Jan and, um, you know, and even some of our equip classes. And, and that's, been, that's been pivotal for my freedom, pivotal for your freedom, right? Because the devil has used a false, like a false thinking, a skewed theology, twisted, if you will, theology of, you know, turn the other cheek. He knows which scriptures to use, go the extra mile. Well, yeah, as, as we're led, but listen, the devil knows how to bind you up in such a harmful way that you 
who were formed and born to create to to fulfill a certain purpose on earth will never get to the thing because you're martyring yourself and I did this for years I did it for years right it's all the people pleasing it's and I have to watch myself now I just had this conversation with a friend this week and we were both talking we're both leaders in ministry and I said listen isn't it interesting that if we're not careful we will still martyr ourselves we will still let the devil drain our energy let the devil you know uh, try to rob us of this, this that or the other peace mental stability all of these things right so Miss Pat really would encourage me to say like it is and um and i've probably shared this gosh on a past podcast maybe i have maybe i haven't but i remember i was seeing a great counselor at the time and i was afraid to say things i was afraid to tell the truth in some cases and when i finally told this truth she said you know shelly because I said to her, I said, listen, I don't want to dishonor anybody. And she went, you're never dishonoring anybody when you tell the truth. And I thought, man, how many kids? I wish, I wish somebody had told me this earlier. I would not have allowed some things to happen in my life that have happened, right? I wish, it, it'll be something I will be preaching to the younger girls that I come across, baby girl, use your voice. You will never dishonor people. You are you never are quote disobeying people when you're telling the truth because you know how many abusers of children, you know, tell them not to say anything. And you know how many how many of us you know what that sounds like when you're sitting in a church that says don't disobey your parents, but one of your parents is sexually abusing you. You understand? Like we've got, we've got to, we need to preach the fullness of the gospel. Uh, make sure we're, we're, we don't have a slanted view. It's, it's kind of like marriage conferences. Quite frankly, I don't like them. Why? Because we, uh, we act like everybody is equally yoked and everybody's on fire for Jesus. And if that were the case, then yes, they would be great conferences where we're strengthened by the brethren. But most of the times... We only, we may, we have abused women in the room, sometimes abused men, as a matter of fact, and nobody's addressing abuse. Well, respect your husband. Well, and this was one of Miss Pat's things, too. She was very much uh, against abuse and oppression, and she, she helped many women navigate through abuse and a lot of the abuse just like what i see is done by leaders in the church why part of it is our theology guys you know and she because i saw her go after these things and 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 really read the word for my read the word for myself i was like oh my gosh the lord is so upset about this right and she would be like a dog on a bone to set a woman free. Uh, as am I today. The girls know I am absolutely a justice fighter. I will not apologize for it ever again. Ever again. If we are born again believers in Jesus, we are supposed to do, what does it say? Do justice. Do justice. How do you do justice? You do something you do something. We don't sit back and watch it, you know. So she, they, these were all things that she helped stir up in me. It was already there. She saw it. I didn't know it was there. I didn't know it was there. What do you see, Shelly? I was afraid to say what I saw, but she knew I was a seer. So she was like, what do you see? She spoke, right? It's just like God, right? What does God say? I believe it was Ezekiel, y'all. Ezekiel, what do you see? Right? He didn't say, what do you hear? What do you see? God speaks to you because in a way, a language you understand. That was something Miss Pat always said. He will speak to you in a language you understand. She was very known for saying this phrase. You are, are uh, I think, I hope I can say it right. Um, you're an unrepeatable masterpiece or unrepeatable miracle of God. I am probably saying that wrong. But that phrase I heard her say in my presence, I can't tell you how many times. 
you know, where she was always speaking to the uniqueness of the person. There was no cookie cutter approach. God would use her mouth. And, and, and you know, going just to the next thing about teaching me the prophetic things, it started like this, where she would be praying over me and she would say, hold on, Shelly, I'm seeing a picture. I'm running pictures. She would say, I'm running pictures. And for the longest, I didn't want to ask her, what does that even mean? You're running pictures. Well, that means she's getting visions, right? But but she was trying to be all things to all people. And she didn't want to scare people who were unfamiliar with that. And, and she was trying to build trust with others. And, and she was very good at that. Very good at that. So I, I learned that when God would not just begin to speak into me with her words, but he would give her pictures of things that he wanted me to know that were, were part of my life, things I was going through, things that he was pointing to to let me know that this season shall pass, Shelley, and you're going to come out of this wilderness like Joseph, and in the end, you will be better for it. And I hate to say that, girls, because... No pain feels good. No, None of it we won't. Y'all know I say that all the time. But there was a positioning of Joseph in all of those years that God was working out in his life. It's, it was the same for me. All of the struggle, all of the pain, all of the rejection, all of it. All of me not understanding what in the world was going on in my life. All of it. Down to the pe- the people who, who came into my life. The people who left my life. Um, the people who misunderstood me and I never got a chance to defend myself. Every single moment. Think of Joseph. I, did I not just pretty much say oh, my life's been like his. But I wasn't technically thrown in a prison or sold, by, sold into slavery. But in some ways you and I have been all of those things. People can sell us into a slavery, a bondage. We, where we run into a wilderness because they speak something over us that takes a root. It takes root and it begins to steer our lives. Right? Whether it's fear or anxiety or um, shame shame is steering a lot of lives today so what's God going to do to get rid of shame he's going to start showing the love of Jesus and he's going to put people with you who can speak into that and say listen there's now no condemnation through Christ Jesus and I bind the spirit of shame that will go the blood of Jesus has covered you y'all know we talk about that a lot here I love that I love that any of you feel comfortable coming to me to confess sin you better keep on doing it you know why because the scripture says in James confess your sins one to another that you may be healed and sometimes we don't say things because we don't have a safe place and I and listen you need a safe place don't you be telling everybody everything some some people are assigned by the Lord for this and some are assigned by the devil and you better know which is which because I got it wrong a time or two and it made me worse I will never forget I can't even believe this is coming to my mind to share because I'm positive I've never shared this there was another counselor I saw maybe by the third time I was I was done with her I remember sharing all my pain and this was her response well it sounds to me like you're the common denominator and I remember looking through my tears because I was getting a little bolder in my faith and I went wow (laughs) that was my response wow shortly after all of that you know, she would constantly look at her watch or look at her. I mean, it was terrible. I left her a message. I will not be returning. You know why? Because God was like, she is not. Number one, not only have I, have I not assigned her to you and you to her, but she's not even speaking in my heart. Right? So you got to be careful. Um, I learned, I learned uh, not just by Jesus, but with with Miss Pat, how to fire people. Hate to hate to say it. Can I just say it that way, guys? That sometimes you need to fire people. Uh, Jan talks a lot about in 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 the groups, or usually early on when you guys were new. Um, especially if if somebody's wanting to come from the groups into counseling, not every counselor is your fit. 
right? You got to make sure, and that goes for the same for me because I'm I'm not a licensed counselor. I would do more pastoral counseling, but I may not be everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. All right. And, and so if I'm not somebody's cup of tea, if somehow God's not able to use me with somebody, then they ought to fire me. And it, it doesn't mean that I did anything wrong necessarily or that you're doing anything wrong by firing me. It's just that we didn't mesh well, right? And that happens sometimes. It really does. God knows who it is that I that I can minister to in the same way with Jan, same thing with Debbie, um, Jamie Lynn and her role, and Nancy. So... I learned with Miss Pat in my life. It, it might be a doctor, it might be a counselor, it might even be a church or a pastor. I have every right with Christ to fire anybody, or uh, if you don't like that word, fire, to move on. Sometimes we fire people, and sometimes we just move along. Right? Nothing bad. It's nothing bad. It's just not working for me. We're going to move along. All right. Um, and so that was one of the things I learned to be bold about. Like, I have the right, again, I was learning what my rights were as a born-again, blood-bought believer with Miss Pat. One of the other things I will tell you, she had no problem warning me. And I knew because she had paved the way earning my trust because she was there on the phone calls because she was consistent in my life because she showed me love because I had hugs because you know what I mean all of these things I when she started warning me on something I knew to listen I knew to listen but she never forced me she would just give me the information and say listen this there's something troubling me about this relationship you have right and it wasn't that the relationship was always bad let me be clear it was that she said I don't see that that's where God is trying I think God is trying to take you somewhere else I think God is trying to stretch you in another way I think and I'll I'll give you an example I had I had a beautiful night at the well events uh, with refuge of light some of my favorite moments we all loved it there with my friend Missy and Randy was here back then and uh, Tammy and uh, Norma loved those nights and I've always wanted to redo them and when I got to a, another church um, a newer church for me in a season I did I said I just think I might be feeling led to do a night at the well and I did the night at the well and she came to me after she said Shelly the night was great but I have to be honest with you I don't think it's time and all she was doing was confirming what I already knew. I already felt in my spirit, no, this isn't the time, it isn't the place, and maybe I'm trying to go back to something that worked before, but it's not really what God's going to use to work now. And she had no problem coming to me and, and, and just saying, hey, you know, I just don't think it was great, but I don't think this is like for you right now. Um, she would always encourage me in my music and, and say, you are, you are beginning to become who God has made you to be with a unique sound. And I, and I used to get so frustrated going, well, what does that mean? But now, you know, as seasons shift, and, you know, if you go back to my first album, which is predominantly black gospel uh, and hymns, which I adore, you, and then we go into more of a swamp, swampy country feel um, where I begin to write with God. Uh, my music is a, is a sea, it's a relational with Jesus. It's how I was growing in him, how I was learning to be who I was called to be. I had to allow to shift. I had to uh, change producers from time to time, uh, you know, just like where I am now with Orlando. God specifically sent me to him. And said, I'm giving you a new sound, Shelly. I'm giving you a new style. And, and when I went there, Miss Pat was always there to go, yep, yep. This is the sound God's trying to pull out of you in this season. He's trying to pull out the, the prophetic heart in you. He's trying to get you to release the messages to the church, to sharpen the bride, to stretch us, Shelly, to call us to repentance. And she was always right there to say, okay, 
Okay, you know, she was always my biggest cheerleader, but she was speaking specifics to me. And, and you know, some I had two of you guys, uh, one maybe or maybe or at least two of y'all, that while I was in the closet Saturday, I was so blessed by the Lord because I was in an extended time of prayer. Um, I had set aside the whole weekend to read a book I knew he was assigning to me and um, had to kind of set everything down and so I did that outside it was such a beautiful weekend was it not Uh, but two of you during prayer I heard the Lord very clearly move on my heart heart for words for you and um, (laughs) and they were specific right and I was like oh gosh bless you Lord that you encourage your people and and miss pat taught me how to stop what i'm doing and minister to people no matter where i am or what i do right where I, if i and i had to sit i had to in my closet i'm texting texting uh, some of you those what god was sharing with me about you and to encourage you so you wouldn't get discouraged so you wouldn't quit so that you would know jesus saw you and god just does that i I learned from her that you just quit what you're doing Um, god had already been training me that training me in that in the way of songwriting you've heard me talk about the times i've had to pull supper off the stove because i heard god start giving me a new song and i'd have to say kids you're going to wait a few minutes till I finished getting this song. And and guess what? Nobody died. Nobody died because Shelly stopped supper and we ate a little late. Um, so, you know, I just, those kinds of things were so important. And I, and I think, again, all of that was in me, but it took somebody like her to recognize it. It was my, it was, it's in my, <laughs> It's in my DNA. It's how he formed me in the womb when he knit me in my mother's womb. It's part of who I am. I can't help but be that way. But because I couldn't recognize it, and it reminds me of, you know, I know Yesenia and um, Jan have an inside joke on me because I'm always double-checking on you guys. And and some of y'all aren't used to that. And so, so Jan's always having to tell y'all, don't worry, this is just how Shelly operates. She's always going to check on you no matter what. Even if nothing's wrong with you, if she has any ounce of thought that something could be wrong, she's going to make sure. And, and that's true. It's, it's kind of like you just have to get used to it. This is who I am. I can't help it. It's, it is my heart to make sure that everybody is okay. Um, and so... I'm, I'm one of those, it's, I'm better safe than sorry, and I'm always going to, uh, I'm, when in doubt, when in doubt, go, when in doubt, reach out, when in doubt, send the text, when in doubt, ask, that's just my philosophy. So, you know, one of the other things, uh, Miss, uh, Pat taught me, because I really think I've, I've shared with you, she taught me how to call it like it is, what do you see, learn to be honest with what you see. She taught me about the prophetic, and she walked me into it um, knowing I may not understand fully. And over time, I learned God's way with her, and she learned God's way with me. Y- y'all know that's really important in these rooms for me is that it ta- I need time with everybody, right? I'm, I'm going to see how you... Uh, mingle with the group I'm going to I'm going to begin to notice that some of you have it y'all know I because I tend to call you out on this in love uh, some of y'all run when you get nervous about things some of y'all become quieter than I like because you know something's troubling you and you don't want to say anything uh, I know when the devil's on an assignment against some of you by now right because I've learned not only God's way with you but I've also learned the patterns of the devil with some of you and and that's and and likewise correct haven't some of you learned my ways god's way with me and and some of you uh pam's really good at this i will get texts at right on time uh just all she'll do is send me a text that has praying hands letting me know she's praying for me and it's always exactly when i need it why because there's all because god is the bearing witness in her that shelly needs some prayer Shelling needs some prayer, right? Uh, and then, you know, Miss Pat taught me through warnings, whether it was relational warnings, 
you know, maybe she saw the enemy. Um, and, and I will, before I go further, let me, I'll share one other warning I received from her. Um, and some, and actually some of us, multiple of us were involved in this. This was many years ago, way before the building. But there was somebody that came into our church and um, this person ended up taking advantage of a lot of people, including the church and myself and others. But early on, I remember Miss Pat calling and I wasn't quite surely, sure, I wasn't understanding what she meant because she wasn't even sure who it was. She said, Shelly, I think there's a spirit of division trying to get between us and, um, and others. And, and this was a person that ended up being arrested later. I mean, it was a big, big ordeal, okay? But not before many of us got hurt because we had mercy hearts and we wanted to help somebody who needed help. But the problem was the person was lying to us and what, what they were saying wasn't true. But the voice, you know, but there was a lot of Christianese. There was a lot of, lot of um, it sounded like prophetic gifting, which probably in some ways, listen, y'all, you can still have a prophetic gift and be used by the devil. That's just all there is to it. Um, but whatever, her life was not in order, and uh, she was taking advantage of people for money and things. And so um, that was, uh, you know, that particular morning, God was trying to tell us all. We just weren't quite sure what was about to come down the pike. So we were all duped in that situation but you know what you just you learn and you live and learn and you move along and um and then she taught me how to care about broken hearts uh or how to care for broken hearts by listening uh by being consistent by being approachable um you know by teaching you know she she actually she and i uh were involved in a, a class at church where we taught how to discern the modern day witchcraft um, she did a lot of what I do in that way and um, she had already known a lot of the things that God had shown me so we were very like minded when it came to modern day witchcraft and warning people about that and how caring for the broken hearted are all of these things right all of these things because a lot of times we have some of that in our lives right and so you know, we'll tend to be broken people as long as we continue in, in witchcraft and, and we won't have the freedom that God desires us to have if we don't get rid of the witchcraft. You know, there's a there comes a point uh, when, once we know, we know. And once we know, we're now held accountable for what we know. Sometimes we just don't know. And bless the Lord, He sends people to tell us the truth, right? Um, but once we know the truth, now we now we're held accountable on whether or not we're going to obey God or not. And she 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 had no problem saying things like that. You know, Shelly, it's a matter of obedience. You need to you know crucify that. Um, she was always pointing me to destiny, always pointing me to Jesus, always pointing me to listen. God's got a higher call on your life. Leave this stuff behind. Leave this other mess behind, right? And, which is, I hope, I hope, I hope, I'm like her echo that hits you guys on a week, you know, weekly basis in the groups or wherever I'm with you. That you know, I'm pointing you to a higher place. We do have to go through valley seasons to get to the mountains. It is what it is. You know, but God sends us help to walk us through the valley. And then the, the last thing, unless something else comes to mind, that uh, we were, she really taught me better how to do this. I Y'all know I'm a big resource girl. That's why we have the Love Letters Workshop, God. I tried to do this workshop years ago, and it didn't go. I, I tried to launch Love Letters in every church I've, well, not every church I've been at, but one in particular, um, it just never, it just, people didn't catch the vision. Well, it wasn't God's timing. It had nothing to do with them. It had everything to do with God's timing. And the Lord knew we would have this building one day and that I would be able to have an actual, you know, workshop. But she taught me how to use resources well. And here's what I mean by that. I kept that woman stocked with newspapers. I kept her stocked with every book I wrote. Um, anything I printed and she God was beautiful that he would direct her 
to the exact person that needed which resource. Every time she would call me and say, I'm out of books. God has already sent me into this doctor's office. She would be giving them out to nurses. Um, I mean, everywhere she went, restaurants like waitresses were a thing with her. Um, other people that she was meeting with, she would she would take a, some of my books and mail them out to her, those she was ministering to on the phone because she still worked with a lot of people in Virginia over the phone. And y'all, that woman knows how to use tools. And I am real big, y'all know this, on understanding that that you have to understand. I did not know this early on. I have confessed this to y'all so many times, but I must say it again. I was never created to, to make albums to sell albums. Now, God may have allowed me to sell albums, but that was not the purpose behind it. The music has always been, I didn't understand this early, so hear me well. Hear me well. I didn't know this. It was always a tool in my tool belt. And God was birthing songs that would minister to hearts. And eventually, because I was a slow study on this one, because, see, I was just trying to do what the industry did, which is make CDs and, and you sell CDs to pay your expenses when you're on the road. And I, God never allowed me to do that well. You know, the first couple years we sold CDs on our merch table. Now you won't find me bringing CDs to merch tables. You won't find me bringing books. You'll find me bringing love letter bags full of everything. Right? Because this is what I'm called to do in this season. And I, she was so good. I, I remember saying, you know, God, I wish we had more people who knew how to use your tools. You know? Um, because I Because I could... The, I'll give you an example. This the church I left a few weeks ago, um, out of uh, Buffalo, or Teague, um, precious. I just fell in love with them. There's there are so many things I loved about them. I hope God lets me go back sooner rather than later. They were precious, and um, and I had made a uh, hundred love letter bags to make sure everybody had one. Um, or two or whatever and um, I just watched God put the right love letter in the right hands I think I shared this with y'all a week or so ago or the last podcast Um, but listen to this and and this is you know I've learned this by following the Holy Spirit but I've also learned this by by being you know around people like Miss Pat And, and you guys I hope I hope you catch the wave of the Spirit with what I'm about to say when, when they were getting their love letters, and a, the love letters were all different. Some of them, I think I shared with you, had the new poetry magazine. Um, some of them, and they all had newspapers. Some of them had a little uh, card stock poem uh, about the little girl. Uh, some of them had the big girl, little girl book. Some of them, uh, one had a CD, which God did on purpose for a sweet woman who I've talked to twice now about how God has used that song with her on Hush Little Baby. The only CD I have left, they're all gone. Look at God. He had a purpose for the very last CD I owned. And it, it had her name on it, you understand. He sent me to Teague, Texas to get that CD to that woman. Do you understand the love of Jesus? God. It just... He will do that for you and me. You and me. I heard them say, at least maybe three, maybe more, but probably three. Shelley, because I had mentioned the book, The Language of Teardrops, during my message to them when I was teaching them um, that day. And they said, Shelly, do, do any of these love letter bags have the language of teardrops book you, you mentioned in it? And I said, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Because, you know, it was 100 bags, so I, they were all in a basket. I couldn't see them all. And so none of them did. So I came home, and I had already given out the uh, love letters. I had a few left over, and I said, "Let me. can I just leave these with you all? 
and you you give them to who you feel led to give them to maybe women who couldn't make it today people you run into i don't care just put them to work and i got home and i had i had 20 love letter uh language of teardrop books left that was it um before i got a place another order and i said lord you want those ladies to have that book don't you so I took all 20 language of teardrop books. I boxed them up with a note and sent them to my friend who goes to that church. And I said, the Lord wants every single one of them to have a copy of this book. Make sure they get it. And, you know, I would see Miss Pat do things like that all the time. And we're talking about a widow living on Social Security for everything, you know, who didn't have support. It was her and her daughter. Um, you know, it, it was hard on them. Life has been difficult. They've had personal tragedies, personal valleys, personal struggles, just like everybody else, but it never stopped her. That's another thing I learned. I'll just, I'll just add this to my, as, as I'm closing here, no matter what she was going through, no matter, matter where there was no money, she never really told me there was no money. She never told me when her money got low. She depended on people's donations to survive in life. Not just ministry, but in life. But she didn't push people to give. She didn't really ask for money much. Maybe twice my whole time I knew her, she sent out a Christmas letter or something saying, if you want to donate, that's it. And God always provided but I can't tell you it was easy. You know, there were days she, her body was hurting, just like some days in my heart, her body was hurting. In the very end, when they moved from Virginia to Texas, her little body was hurting. You know, she had broke, she had fallen and broken um, some things twice. And her body was still healing. And God had spoke a very clear word to her daughter to, that it was time to go to Virginia where her daughter was um, which which God had already told me ahead of time was coming and you know that was a hard trip for my sweet friends a very hard trip she had very little time her family to get boxes done to get help to get things packed to get the the trailers you know, loaded to go all the way to Virginia. And guess what? A snowstorm hits. And she has to, you know, figure out which way to go where they'll be safe. I'm just telling you, obeying God is not easy. But this is, I am the product. I am the legacy of, of one woman. You understand? There are a lot of people who have spoken into my life. I'm only telling you today about one because she is the one that has gone home to be with Jesus. And so today, I am the voice left. Her daughter's the voice left. Her friend, Tina Martin in Virginia, her best friend, is the voice of someone who, who, has, who has been fed by my, our, our mutual friend. And, and, and even what a blessing Miss Pat left behind, because now Tina and I are very close and great friends and can encourage one another. And they were best friends uh, all their life, way before I even knew Miss Pat. And so, you know... Look at the legacy and the, the, man, I can see a quilt. I can see a quilt in the, um, in just, I'm running pictures. <laughs> I'm running pictures, guys, just like, just like she did. And it's like a patchwork quilt. And there's so much beauty in it. Some of it's from sorrowing seasons and some of it's from joy-filled seasons. It's all hard, though, you know. One of you guys, Jennifer, you say, when it's bad, it's still good. It's true. And the beautiful thing is, while she's in glory, her little feet always tap to good Christian music. She always wanted more freedom in worship. She always wanted to be in places where there was just more freedom where she could just let loose for the Lord and disappear from man's eyes but have his full attention. 
she's doing that today in glory. I'm convinced of it. She's asking a bazillion questions that she's always wanted to know the answers to. She's probably having beautiful reunions with people she has missed and loved. But I'm, I'm left here. With a host of other sons and daughters who have gleaned from her life and her faithfulness and her obedience and her pressing through hard times and her being willing to be a voice against multitudes at times, against the spirit of religion. She's been thrown out by churches, thrown up against the wall by uh, demons at times. And the woman, the little woman, kept going. You understand? There's a lot of people who are big in stature. They're big in voice. They carry big titles. Guess what? The devil's not afraid of them. But this little woman, he sure was afraid of her. And I guess today I would just commit myself to being like her when I grow up. One of those that hell is afraid of. And I pray that, that all of these things stir you that you understand the life you're living now has purpose there's a legacy in it what are you doing with that life is it self-serving every day when you go to bed you, is there anything you did at all for jesus that day did he ask something of you and you didn't do it did he put somebody in your path at work and they were weeping, but you just let them cry? I'm praying for you. That's not enough, girls and guys. So what? You're praying for them. That's a lovely thing. Please keep praying. But why don't you go put hands on them and say, let's pray right now. What's going on? Let me talk you through this. Tell me what your heart's saying. What are you seeing? You know what? Get into the muck and mire with them. You're not too busy. You're really not too busy. This is part of your schedule being orchestrated by God on any given day. It's a matter of whether you will say, stop and go, yes, Lord. Because when I seek God, how many times do I say this? When I seek God in His righteousness, all these things will be done. Meaning, all of my workload will get completed. All of my tasks will get done when I seek the kingdom of God right as long if all i do in that day is seek the kingdom then he orders everything else because he's faithful to what he promised that when i seek all these things will be added and i can trust all of my life to him that today every day even in the seasons that i thought there was nothing i had good to offer god was building legacy kingdom legacy where jesus would be exalted where God would be seen as a beautiful father who loves his daughters and sons. Where the Holy Spirit would be able to come alive and live in a place. Not temples made by man, but a Holy Ghost that lives in man. Inside of man. The temple that is not built by man. And that you, I pray so much, would find your place in space in the, as a member of the body of Christ. You are a member that is significant. A member. I was, I was hearing, a, 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 actually I'm reading the, this book. Some of y'all know The God of Seasons. That's just ministering to me so much, making so much sense by Richard Blackaby. And he has this thing about cemeteries. He goes around and he reads on the headstones. And all of these comments are made. Honestly, some of them are mockingly. And some of them are terrible comments left behind on somebody's tombstone. And I've been thinking, oh God, what would be on mine? At the end of this, at the end of my error, like my sweet Miss Pat, at the end, what will mine read? What will it say? Oh, God, you know what I pray it say, says? That she loved the brokenhearted. Or that she loved God and loved people. I, I just want it to be simple. Or that she fought for the oppressed. Lord, I pray for every hearer that they would just grab hold of something. Something, God, that you've said through Miss Pat's life to understand. I'm just 
I'm just a seed she planted that's in bloom. And they too are a seed. There, something is blooming in them, even from our rooms, from their past mentors, from other people, their pastors, their, their teachers, their other leaders. We are certainly not the only house of the Holy Ghost. But that, God, you are building your garden in each one of us. You're tilling up soil. You're plowing the field, and it hurts sometimes, but then you're planting a seed. The rain comes. I, I saw the other day, and we have it in this building. No rain means no flowers. It is true on so many levels. It's true. But then the sun shines, you know, and these beautiful blooms come out in the spring. Beautiful blooms. And I think I shared this on the last podcast. And Song of Solomon says, The winter is past. The spring has come. The flowers are in bloom. And it's time to sing. God, let every life that hears my voice today hear you say, Leave a legacy of Jesus. Not a legacy of hard work, although that's a good thing. Not a legacy of even family let me tell you what we can all have families and not go not you know maybe we don't cultivate jesus in our life right we don't adult we don't create idols with families with all of these things we can have everything that looks looks perfect and not leave legacy not kingdom legacy i'm asking you father to give them every day that there you would you would help them be intentional purposeful god how do i leave how do i drop a seed on the ground today how do i drop a seed in a heart today lord how do i touch a life today i've started asking god lord give me this many in a day i'm asking you god for i want to touch this many people in one day i'm not afraid to ask anymore because you know what he loves those kind of prayers god raise up women and men of kingdom legacy There is a multiplication that happens, guys and girls, in your life when you start dropping seed into the hearts of mankind. Sometimes you won't even know you're doing it. Sometimes you won't have a clue how important something you said was to somebody. Sometimes it's just enough that you acknowledge someone that's never been acknowledged. How many times have I heard some of you say in my room, I've just always felt invisible. Well, then that ought to make you and I more intentional about making sure nobody is ever in the room with us feeling invisible. Right? So God, may we be, may we be like Miss Pat as we grow up in you. May we leave legacies that go on and on and on. God, I am mindful that she didn't only just teach me how to work with the brokenhearted, but she helped me birth books. She helped me birth writings. She encouraged me to put things in formats that would outlive me. And some of you guys need to hear that. Some of the things you're writing are going to outlive you. When you and I are gone to glory, those paperbacks are still going to exist. Lord, I thank you so much for a well-lived life. Uh, I can't think of anybody more deserving than this woman. Of you, you are a good and faithful servant. Lord, I thank you for the impact she's had on my life and the many others just like me. I am not. I'm. I'm only one of many. I pray God that each one of us carries what she imparted from you in us. And that we all collectively would carry the mantle on in the unique way you've gifted us. May every listener, as well as myself, do that beginning today. In Jesus' name, that we would become legacy and glory carriers. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, go make some kingdom legacy. All right? Love y'all. I'll catch you next week. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast.
We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round the clock radio station, Royalty for Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com. <laughs> 